I've got some exciting news. I've got a new sponsor in addition to Creality, a local printed circuit board company called JLC PCB. This is really awesome because it will let my channel grow and should let me take on all sorts of new projects I couldn't before. I've been looking for an additional sponsor for a while now. I've had a lot of offers, but it's actually a lot tougher than you think. Can you imagine me trying to pitch cheap knockoff products, Shanzai Bluetooth earphones, or promoting a company that competed with my friends at Adafruit? There were even some mobile gaming companies I was talking to, but when I tried their apps, there were all sorts of sleazy tricks to get you to pay more money instead of just letting you buy the game once and enjoy playing it. Finding a company that sells an honest product that you would actually use, that you think would benefit your audience, is not as easy as it looks. And if I were the sort of girl comfortable earning a living in some dodgy way, let's just say I would be living a much more comfortable life. Okay, but why printed circuit boards? Well, I was watching the welding videos the other day. I want to learn how to weld. And I came across this one. $50 an hour, beginner welding products you can sell to get your business going. Both of these are for window treatment places, design centers, people that do curtains, shades, etc. They're in every city. Go find them, go make friends with them. You'll become their supplier real quick. The desired curtain rod diameter will slide into. We're gonna cut that piece of pipe as number one. You can also just buy a half round pipe, go on the bench grinder, you're about 10 bucks at Harvard Trade, or weld it on the inside. If you weld on the inside, the rod needs to. So you can buy these inside mount brackets fairly cheaply, and some design centers will do that. Others wanna have something that's a little heavier and uh, heavier duty, which is when they come to somebody like me or you. That's great, right? Go here, do this. Make this, sell it to these people. Really practical advice. The link is in the description box. In the maker community, maybe because of its roots in the hacker community, they can be a bit snooty about actually making things for money. It's just not a common topic. It's all supposed to be about passion and creativity, which is fine if you have a high paying job as a software developer to fund making as a hobby but not so great for everyone else. There's actually something little like this in Chinese culture. When I was a little girl, my grandfather and I came across some street performers. They were walking on swords and bending spears with their neck, all sorts of stuff like that. I was of course very impressed by this Gong Fu. My grandfather explained, this was only sort of Gong Fu. These were the beggar arts. Historically, these were separate techniques, tricks really, taught basically to put food on the table. You see, Chinese Kung Fu is an art, but however passionate about it you were, practicing it full time was not really a practical way to earn a living. So many schools taught the beggar techniques of feel a bit theater, a bit stage magic, but that also required the extreme fitness that Kung Fu practitioners have. So if the cupboards were empty, the students could go out, put on the show, pass the head, and make a few coins. Like a lot of stories about Chinese Kung Fu, who knows if it's true or not. But the point remains. A welder can easily put food on the table with hooks and curtain rods. Amateur carpenters make cutting boards. Sewing and fabric art, no problem. Coats sell fast. Even baking a few trays of cupcakes, done. Most DIY communities have their beggar techniques. In other words, they practice their art, but they also have a basic monetizable skill set they can rely on in a pitch, pinch, and a clear profession to a skill tray if they're good enough. But in the maker community, not so much. There was a push at Maker Fair a couple years ago for Maker Pro, but that was more about shoehorning joint corporate sponsors into the event. Intel is not a pro maker by any definition. So being in Shenzhen, the place where everyone goes to get their hardware built, I'm perfectly positioned to talk about, well, making for money. If not full-time hardware development, how to get a small project made and put in an online store. One of the easiest ways to do this, sort of a maker's version of a big sale, is with a simple printed circuit board. 
because it's not about pure DIY or anything. It's our beggar technique. We can take shortcuts and outsource parts of it that as a DIY project we would do ourselves. So let's get started and see if we can use a little bit of knowledge to make a little bit of money. I'm going to start with one of my bills that a lot of people have asked me to sell, but that's not really practical to manufacture in its current form. My LED pectel rings. You've seen me put them together in one of my past videos. There's a lot of soldering, heat shrink tubing, and large battery pack that attach to a choker that's really not appropriate for young kids. While it's very cool looking and very bright, all together with all the parts and labor, it would probably have to sell for almost $40 or $50, and that's just no fun. Most parents can't afford that. Some things are only fun if they're cheap, and this is one of them. I've spoken in the past about design constraints and how they shape the final result. Keeping this affordable is probably the most important one so far. The next design constraint is power. Most wearable LED designs use LiPo batteries. I'm not saying they are wrong, I just won't do it. The failure mode for LiPo batteries is to explode and burst into frames. I'm not striping an unshielded one to a kid's head. That means button batteries, like the CR2032 is our next best option. That's really going to limit our power output, but it should still be more than in love. If this were a maker project, I would use this opportunity to learn and demonstrate KiCad. That's the Y2 for this situation. But it's not a maker project. This is about bringing a simple product to market as quickly and easily as possible. So we delegate. Now I'm go still going to do regular DIY and maker projects on this channel where I do all that stuff myself. But I can tell you right now from watching many, many fail failed hardware startups in Shenzhen, DIY is not the correct way to do hardware development unless that skill is your profession. This is where your making and DIY experiences give you a huge advantage because you know what can be done and you know how to explain to a professional what you want done. But don't try to do it all yourself. Design for manufacturing is something entirely different. Seriously, delegate. 90% of being smart is knowing what you are dumb at. So what I found online here is all the plans for a simple LED tracer circuit, what's sometimes known as a Larson scanner. It has a few different modes. All I'm going to do is get the new PCB designed so those lights go in a circle instead of a line. Nice and simple. First, I've drawn up a rough idea of how I think the board might look, with the understanding that a real electrical engineer might laugh and tear all that up, and I have to respect that, because if I don't, I'm going to lose money. So here we are in Tinkercad. This is not for circuit design, of course, but it lets me give the engineer an idea of what I want. And then off to Fiverr. I actually have loads of engineer, engineering contacts here in Shenzhen that I can do, I can have do this. But that doesn't help you. So I'm going to show you how to get it done in English on Fiverr. Maybe in the future, I'll offer my friends an electronic design service. If anyone is interested, let me know in the comments. Anyway, a contractor from Pakistan by the name of Salman Ahmed took the job. For $150, there were a few bids around $50, but he had better reviews. Salman got the job done in a few days and supplied all the source files and shared the file with me in a web tool called ECEDA. ECEDA interfaces directly with JLC PCB. They own it. So if you know how, you can do the editing and creation there. I don't know how yet, so I'm just going to upload the files into their interface, order a few of the rings, see if they work. Next time, I visit the JLC factory and watch the whole process as my PCBs are made.